Hey everyone, it's February 1st still, and it's still Wednesday. Welcome to the DEI Working Group for Chaos. I'm Elizabeth, I did not change my name here, but I'm Elizabeth, the Chaos Community Manager, in case you don't know me. Um, and just to reiterate a few things at the start of the meeting, um, first one is don't care if your camera's on or off, whatever is makes you comfortable is great. Um, totally fine with us. If you're free to uh, chat in the chat window, we'll try to incorporate that in the flow of the meeting. Um, also, all of our chaos meetings are under the chaos code of conduct. So just keep that in mind. And the third thing is, what is the third thing? Oh, yes. The point of this meeting is to talk about our D, uh, diversity, equity, inclusion um, metrics and topics that come up. And so if you have questions about other things, totally fine. We'll just maybe take those offline and um, answer them in Slack or something like that. So just want to put that out there. I want to welcome a couple of new faces. Uh, Josh, welcome, welcome. It was good to have you at the DEI event badging meeting this morning. And also Shilpi, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but welcome. You seem like a new name to us. So welcome, welcome, welcome. We're happy to have you here. I will drop the minutes again in the chat in case anybody needs them. And I will share my screen. And if you would like to add your name to the agenda, that's great. Um, and if you wanna tell us what your favorite fruit is, that's also great. Um, I'm a pear person. Actually, you know what? I feel like I should change this to Elizabeth Perrin. There we go. I love pears so much. I would eat them every day of my life. I love them. What is a Parag Paraguaya? What is that? I've never heard of that. It is only in Spain, as far as I know. So I only get it when I go over there. But it is a, it's a smushed peach that yeah. looks it looks kind of like a Saturn peach or a donut peach in the US, but it has the texture of like a firm canned pear and it tastes like a mango. Interesting. I have never heard that in my whole life. So that's is amazing. And I can't get them in the US. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, I don't know, I even know where. We have a store near here called Jungle Gyms and it's an international, it's huge, it's an international store. I'm gonna look for them because sometimes, I'm gonna actually write that down right now because it sounds delicious and I'm always they, down the time. I think that it's a fruit import thing is why we don't have them here. Uh, I see, okay. But Daniel brought me, when we were in Dublin, Daniel went back for, the day to Spain to go see family over the weekend and then came back to the conference, like between inner source and open source conferences. So he brought me back Paraguaya to Dublin. So I had them in my hotel room. My whole okay. <laughs> That's Daniel Izquierdo? Yeah. Yeah, see, you gotta have chaos friends. <laughs> They'll go the <laughs> extra mile for you for sure. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's hop in um, to the agenda. From last time, I think Sean was supposed to be the facilitator. Oops, what did I do there? Uh, Sean was supposed to be the facilitator from last week or for this week. Um, he's traveling, I think, today to ChaosCon in Boston. So, no biggie. I'll just I'll just take it over. It's no biggie. Does do we have anybody that wants to facilitate next week? I mean, I'm happy to do it if nobody wants to. It doesn't seem like anybody's super enthused about that. Um, we, for, for those who have not facilitated a meeting, we do have a little guide to help you. <laughs> Anita says awkward silence, yes. Um, so if, if that's something you're considering and you're just not sure if you know how to do it or know what to do, um, we do have a little guide that will help you. So, um, but I'm, I'm also happy to facilitate. I'll just put me down here, no big. <laughs> Um, I will share that, Mary. I, I will find that. I gotta dig it out somewhere and find that, and I will definitely share that in the. I'll, I'll, I, you know what? I'll put it in Slack. How's that? After the meeting is over, I'll put it in Slack, if that's okay. Unless somebody else knows where that is and can give it to Mary before before I can, they're quicker than me. 
Um, okay, so the first thing is that we are launching Discourse today. If you haven't heard, yay, yay. Uh, we'll, we will be doing, and I, I really don't like doing this, but we're going to do it. We're just going to do it. And we're going to add all at everybody on our Slack, which is like 1,100 people or something. A lot, but that's okay. Um, just to let everyone know that we have this thing um, to go sign up and there's a couple of threads that are open that we we started just so people like kind of have a place to post something. Um, but we would love it if you do sign up and you have a topic you want to open totally fine like if this is a grand experiment so um, we're just going to see how it goes and see how the Community responds if it's something that the Community ends up adopting or not um, it's it's designed to replace our mailing list which. Um, we we did have for those of you who, who don't know we did have a few different mailing lists they were the old literally old linux list serve mailing lists they were not easy to find they were not easy to join and they are not easy to really understand how to even use them so we did have one for the dei group specifically and i think the last post was maybe eight months ago or something like that so not super high traffic um and i think that's because it's a pretty big barrier to those who aren't Kind of familiar with how to how to use those so that was the main reason to go to discourse um, and then we had some other ideas um, specifically for chaos africa i think ruth wants to try some things and she was hoping we would have uh, discourse up and running so that kind of motivated us to to go ahead and do that so that's launching today uh does anybody have questions about that do we have a how-to guide on how to get them started on discourse Yes, so when you sign up there's a post that's pinned globally so it's post it's pinned on every category. Um, and it says start here and it explains um, kind of what we're using discourse for what the, the categories are the starting categories uh, and like what kind of conversations go in each of those categories and then there's a there's a if you've never used discourse before there's a starting guide and then links to our privacy FAQ and terms of service also. So all of that will be in that initial post that says start here when you sign up. So hopefully people can find that. And if they can't, then we will pull that information out and post it other places for folks. So hopefully that works. Does that answer your question, Mary? Okay, perfect. Any other questions about discourse? For, uh, I should also say, for those of you who prefer email, um, you can subscribe to threads and tags. So um, if you would, you can just interface, you don't have to like go to another site to check stuff. You can actually just subscribe through email and it'll come in your email box, just like the mailing list did. So if you are an email uh, person, you prefer that, you can, you can still use discourse in that way. So I just wanna clarify that too. And then um, the uh, the mailing lists we were using have all been shut down as of yesterday. So there, the DEI one we had is is shut down. We we did save the archives um, for just historical purposes, but yeah, those are actually shut down. So if you were wanting to use them, <laughs> you're not gonna be able to. Sorry about that. <laughs> You'll have to go to Discord. Um, okay, so the next topic is the public health pledge, and we do have a few new faces on this call. So. Um, Josh, would you mind kind of running through this again, just for folks who haven't haven't had a chance to hear um, what you're working on? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. So, um, hello, I'm Josh, uh, author of the Public Health Pledge, and uh, the Public Health Pledge, for folks who are familiar with the Code of Conduct Pledge from the last decade, it'll sound familiar. Um, the idea behind the Public Health Pledge is that uh, uh, Nice to meet you again as well, is that the uh, participants and organizers can take a pledge to say, hey, um, you know, I will only run or participate in events that uh, have robust health and safety measures in place. This is in light of the, uh, the pandemic, but also really just health and safety in general is just an area that's been neglected in, in, in conference organizing. Um, and so what we're, we're doing here is both there's the pledge effort, uh, which I'm excited about getting people to commit to that. We do have a couple of events that are starting to commit to that. Um, the reason that I'm here, though, is because we just launched the 
uh, an event badging standard, right? Because we want to, we know that event organizers, uh, even when they're trying hard, uh, can't always do perfect, you know, and there no, is no such thing as perfect, in fact. And so what we want to do is provide a framework for, uh, for thinking about uh, health and safety policies and the different measures that can be in place and really empower people to um, to to have those conversations with organizers and for organizers to understand what what their targets can be, you know, when they're thinking about this for their next event. So this badging standard uh, looks at five different things for an event. It looks looks at uh, masks, vaccines, testing, uh, ventilation, and alternatives. So that's like remote participation, refunds, things like that. And this is going to be a, we just launched this this week. Um, the idea is that events can do a self-assessment um, to rank themselves. To be clear, even events that do are, are doing their very best will get a mix of grades. Um, you know, like, <laughs> I think it, in the public health community, people were recently joking about the efforts made at uh, Davos uh, to take to keep people safe. That is naturally an extremely well-funded event, and no surprise, they would have gotten flying colors on this 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 badging standard. But not every event is like that. Not every meetup is like that. Some conferences are scrappy, scrappier than others, and I run some of those. And so we just want to be realistic about what's what's possible, and. Uh, and the hope is really as an organizer, a community of organizers, do this self-assessment for the event, uh, put the information in a easily digestible way up for your participants, and then just be open about, well, here's where we're doing our best. Actually, we're doing our best all across the board, um, but you know, these are things that we were not able to do. You know, an example I shared in the last meeting to give a sense of that is uh, one of the conferences that I organized or co-organized, North Bay Python, um, our events used to be held in a like an 1800s uh, uh, theater, and suffice it to say, buildings built in that period are not very accessible to people with mobility issues. Um, and so, what we did for North Bay Python is we we had an accessibility guide, and we said, "Hey, here's here's what we we've got taken care of." Here's where we know you might find, find some challenges. Uh, here's who to talk to if you run into anything and, and want to help figure out how to navigate this. So the idea is we're just, you know, we're not always gonna do perfect, but we can at least give people information so that they can figure out how to navigate the event in a way that works for them. Um, and so that's the same idea here with the public health pledge badging standard is that events can uh, just reflect on on what their health and safety policies are, and attendees can use that information to navigate the event appropriately, or or choose to participate remotely uh, if if it's not something that they can accept in terms of risk. Um, so I showed up this morning uh, because I I started I realized oh my goodness the chaos project has been doing all this great work and has this DEI event badging thing, uh, so I was pleased to be in the earlier meeting to share share this and um, looking forward to finding uh, all the points of collaboration and, and being a participant here and um, speaking to matters of health, safety, and inclusion for people with disabilities. Thank you so much, Josh. And again, just to reiterate from this morning, this is so fantastic. And I'm so happy that that someone has taken this um, effort on and um, is really pushing it forward. I love it. I love everything about it. So um, just for those who were not at the DEI event badging meeting this morning, um, there is an issue that we can talk about what's going on with it, how we can integrate it into our current um, event badging application process. Um, so here's an issue. It's linked in the minutes if you do have thoughts and you want to drop them in there. Um, but what we decided we think we're going to go forward with is creating a new metric around this um, that will basically just not uh we don't well i don't know what it's going to look like but it's i think designed to kind of mirror what is going on here um, and then as this uh effort evolves and changes and um, and such then we can kind of apply that back to our metric and, and evolve along with it 
Um, and then we are going to start asking, we're going to add a new section to our application that asks specific questions about this. Um, we're going to ask what badge they received on each of the five points. Um, this is another question I had. Do you think we should ask if they signed the pledge? Like, do we think that that's an important thing to ask? Or is that kind of ancillary to what we're doing here? I, I'll, I'll just tentatively offer that. Uh, I would love that. Um, but I also appreciate if that ends up, if, if that is sort of like a, a fundamentally different sort of thing. Um, because I, one, one thing that I, I have, there are a lot of people who have been very supportive of this effort uh, and, and like it, but still can't sign it because for instance, their employer or you know, some they have some personal circumstances that prevent them from being able to make that that commitment. Yeah. Um, and so I try to leave some room for that. And and um, so if we can encourage it, I'm yeah. over the moon. Uh, requi requiring it, you know, might not be possible for everybody. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, oops, I can spell require. Um, for legal purposes, or yeah, I, I totally understand what you're saying, um, and it is a little bit different of a of a of a vibe or of a you know of, of a flair to um, signing the pledge because they could sign it and then maybe not actually <laughs> do anything with it. That's I guess. true. <laughs> so we'll just encourage them to sign it just to to make that statement publicly, but um, yeah, maybe not require it. Um, so that. We're going to talk about that when we get down here about that process of creating this new metric, um, because this is the group that would do that would create that metric for now. Um, actually, I should bring this up here. Um, I'll just put this on the agenda real quick here. Um, so this is something we are going to, I mean, I, I don't know why we wouldn't move forward with this. I mean, no, I don't think anybody had any objections to it whatsoever. I think everyone seemed really positive about it. And I think it's it's an excellent thing to incorporate. So just want to thank you again, Josh. Do we have any other um, comments or questions about how this would work or Josh's initiative? Okay. Um, we'll probably bring this up again next week, just because we do have quite a few folks who are out for chaos con traveling this week. Um, so we will bring it up. I would also, if, if anyone is not opposed to this, would like to bring it up at the next community meeting, just to let folks know that this is something that's important to us and we want to include and we're going to include. So I'm actually going to make sure I put this. And all right, so if we don't have any other questions for Josh or comments about this, anything, we'll go ahead and move on. Okay, last time we um, were, well, the last few times we've been talking about creating this onboarding team of tour guides, I think we landed on. Um, and this would be the group that is available for folks who are new to chaos and not sure where to go uh, it would be like a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing so that uh, somebody a newcomer to chaos would kind of request a tour guide and then one of the group would would um, come forward and take kind of take care of that person so that that the newcomer has like a one-on-one -on -one person to go to that they can ask any question Although we are going to still try to uh, try to encourage folks to ask questions out in the open, just so others can take advantage of the answers and have this, because there's a lot of the questions that are asked that are similar. So, um, but that way, that person does have kind of that that friendly face that they can reach out to. Um, so, uh, just to clarify on that launch of that, we're going to wait till after this discourse thing and after ChaosCon, um, and we're going to move it forward probably next week. So. We do have a list of folks who are interested in being on that team. And I think the list is somewhere right here. So if you are interested in being on this team and your name is not here, 
feel free to um, add your name or uh, there is a, I think we have a private Slack that we started just so we can kind of talk about setting this up. Um, I'll copy this in back into the, actually I'll copy it here just so in case anybody wants to see it. And I'll put it up here too, back up here. Am I the only one that does this, that wants to like add a comment for a link? I do, I do it all the time in Google Docs. I don't know why. It always, I always have to double, like second guess myself of where to add the link. It's so so weird. I don't know why I do that, but anyway. Um, okay, any questions about that or the, like the timing of stuff or anything like that? Rock on. We will go ahead and move forward. <laughs> we are jamming through this agenda like so quick. I love it. Um, oh, hey, precious. Here's the oh, let me. Hey, I didn't see people coming. Hey, let's drop these minutes in here for you folks that just joined. Feel free to add your name and tell us about your fruit if you like. <laughs> um, we already had this discussion about a Paraguaya, so yeah, if you're curious about that, you'll have to get with Katie. She has the whole story. <laughs> Apparently, it's only in Spain, so you got to go to Spain to get them, but it's probably worth it, I think. <laughs> okay, so um, just a reminder for any newcomers that are on this call or anybody that wants to just show up and attend, totally fine. We are having an onboarding session for new Chaotix um, today, right after this meeting, and um, this will be kind of like a presentation format as opposed to our open office hours, which are really informal, like come and go, just pop in, ask some questions, hang out with us for an hour or whatever, whatever works. Um, it's really, there's no agenda or anything like that. So this session that's today is happens the first Wednesday of every month at the same time and at this same uh, Zoom channel. And it will, again, just be a presentation of here's chaos, here's all the different moving parts, because there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of things going on at chaos. So um, it's a really good uh, kind of just overview of all the things and the ways that you can get involved, because there's a lot of different ways um, that we love to have contributions from folks. So just want to remind everybody that that's happening. Questions on that? Nope. Okay. I can hear my dog snoring. Sorry if you all hear that. That's what that noise is. It's my dog snoring. She's yeah, I'm kind of jealous. Yeah, I love I wish I was snoring right now. But anyway, sorry. Um, okay, this next item on our agenda, the metric development group. So we have been it's been interesting the journey that chaos has taken with regard to metric development and the way we can think about metrics and the way they come together. And we're kind of leaning toward um, having one group that just focuses on metrics development. And so what that might look like, and we're, get, we're just kind of throwing this idea around at all the working group meetings, is that we would still keep our working groups the way they are, for the most part. Um, so DEI would never stop, like we, we need this group, like we can't, we're, we will never get rid of this group. <laughs> we love this group, we'll never get rid of it. Um, and it will probably still meet weekly because we do have stuff to talk about it seems like a lot um other groups may not like evolution we would still kind of keep them around of course um but maybe they will switch to like a monthly cadence um, maybe they don't need to meet every week or every other week so the idea is that um those kind of working group sessions would be more for like high level conversations and when a metric idea comes up there would be a group de designed to specifically focus on writing that metric out. Um, and so just want to kind of throw that out there. We're also leaning toward having groups that are more user focused. So for instance, we, we uh, a few uh, a month ago or so, we a couple months ago, November, I think, pivoted our value working group to focus only for OSPOs. So what that group now does is brings together folks from different OSPOs of different companies, universities, whatever. They come together and they talk about the kind of metrics that they're thinking about, what questions they're trying to answer, what metrics they need. Um, and really, it's, it's, it's been a super interesting and very successful group. We have like 25 people that show up to that group. 
So we were also thinking maybe we would do one for community managers because the things that like me as a community manager, things I would want to look at are different than maybe what an OSPO person would want to see. So bringing those groups of users together, I think is something that we are going to probably start to do just because that's kind of how things are evolving. Like we have been thus far focusing on these individual metrics. And then we started our metrics models group, which tries to pull together metrics to paint a bigger picture um, of things like, you know, you can take your blood pressure, you can take your heart rate. They might not mean much just in, you know, the numbers themselves, but when you bring them together with some other things like that can really paint a picture about your overall health. So we're kind of shifting towards going away from focusing so much on these individual metrics to, okay, now how can we pull them together and answer these bigger questions and how do we um, involve the community and hear what they're they're thinking about and what's on their minds and what questions they want to answer. So we're thinking about the we have the OSPO group. We're thinking about a community manager group. We're also thinking about an event organizer group, which I should, probably should have mentioned in the event badging initiative meeting. I did not, um, but that that would be the third. So those are kind of the three groups of folks that we're we're thinking about right now. Um, this is all just kind of thoughts. But um, we are going to probably bring it up again in the community meeting. We'll continue to kind of think about this and, and like marinate on it. And um, yeah, yeah, that's not the right word. Ruminate. Yeah, that's a better word. Ruminate about it. I don't know. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to maybe see what this group thought after all that big, long, <laughs> long diatribe. I would really like to know what this group would think about something like that where we just have a group that only focuses on metric development of all for, for all of the working groups together. Do we have any thoughts? And if we don't, that's totally fine too. If you're just like, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. That's also valid. <laughs> that's completely valid. Okay, well, we'll just kind of keep that in your in the back of your mind. And if you if you do have thoughts on that, um, and you are able to come to the community meeting, we'll, we will be talking about it there a little more or on Slack or in discourse, discourse. So yeah, just kind of think about that, how you, if you think that might go or, or um, if you have concerns or comments uh, about that, just kind of kind of think about that. We do have a little bit of time, so um, I wanted to kind of look at these metrics. Oh, goody. Thank you, Mary Blessing, for putting that comment in there. Yes. Okay. Um, I wanted to kind of look at, so this is the, this is our metrics spreadsheet. For anybody who has not seen this, this is where we kind of keep all of the metrics that we have released that we're thinking about that are currently in progress. And you can tell like on the on our DEI, this is for all the working groups we have right now. So common, obviously we're in DEI right now, OSPO working group, evolution, risk, and our metrics models. So these are right now our working groups. And we have like metrics for each one of these groups. Um, and as you can see, actually from common, like there's a whole lot of ideas <laughs> that we have, same for DEI, there's a whole lot of ideas that we've had um, that maybe we started to, to try to work out a metric for, um, but we did not, we haven't finished it yet. Uh, we have a ton of ideas. And so this was also kind of another uh, impetus for um, just having that group that focuses on this. Because I think what happens is we get kind of caught up in all of the higher level conversations, which is totally fine. But then the actual creating of the metrics now is kind of taking a backseat to all these other high level things that we're thinking about. So, you know, these kind of sit and we don't, we used to take, we used to dedicate, you know, like 15, 10, 15 minutes of every meeting to work on metrics and we haven't really been doing that. So, um, I don't know. Um, I don't know what this group thinks about this, but if there's anything in here, in the meantime, until we figure out the metrics and <laughs> development group and, and sort all that out, if there's anything in here that someone is, feels passionate about and wants to look at and wants to maybe advance a metric, and Josh, we will add your um, your metric idea in event diversity 
if that's okay, that's kind of where we've been keeping all of our event related uh, metrics. So actually, let's add this in right now. We'll put it as considering, but um, we're going to move that forward pretty quickly. Uh, what do we want to call this? Just public health and safety, I guess. Oops. Uh, we don't have anything really started. We don't have a doc or anything yet, but we will we will work on it um, together. Maybe maybe for next time I can start a template, and maybe we could actually work on it next time. Makes sense, okay? Uh, so typically, what we do is we have a template that is just in a Google Doc. Um, actually, we can look at this. So event. Event, let's look at event location inclusivity, because I think this is also a really good one that we just kind of didn't get finished. Um, so this was the question we were trying to answer. Is the event located in a region where government's cultural context or society generally harm the physical and or psychological safety of event attendees? So for instance, if you have, like in the States, if you're hosting an event in um, North Carolina, like there are certain laws there about, you know, gendered bathrooms, for instance, that might make it more difficult for someone in the LGBTQ community to feel safe, and they may not want to go to your event, um, which, you know, I mean, like, for folks who have have organized events, like, like Josh said earlier, you know, nothing is perfect, you can't always control, obviously, <laughs> what is happening with this, the governments and things like that. And so you just do the best you can. But maybe even just being able to to notify folks of like, hey, this is a thing, just so you have that information before you show up here, and then you can decide as long as you have the information, then you can kind of decide how you feel about it. So this was an, uh, an event, um, a metric we had started, and it looks like we've made it pretty far along. Um, we just hadn't quite pushed it over the finish line, and it's been out for a long time, and we have so many of these metrics that are in that state. So. Um, you know, again, that's kind of the, another impetus for having this this group that would just kind of bring these over the finish line. Um, but this is basically what our metric template looks like. Um, it, this one is older, so we're missing a few things, so it would need to be updated, um, especially with regard to the ethical usage of our metrics. We have a statement that goes in every metric now um, about the ethical use of um, metrics and like measuring things and privacy and collecting you know personal data and all of that. So this metric needs to be updated, but this is basically what it looks like. So we have this template and then we just fill in the blanks essentially. So um, that's what we'll do for for Josh's metric idea. Um, and then if you know, again, if, if folks want to look at this, I'll, I'll drop this in the chat too. It's also in the minutes. But if there's something that like really jumps out at you and you're like, yeah, I really want to work on this, you can either do it offline, you can just feel free to put things in this doc. If there's an idea you have and you don't know how to start, um, I will find the template. I think actually, wait a minute, I think it's in, I think it's in our community. Let me just find the template right now. Let's do it. It's in our, I think it's here, templates. Look at that. I found it right off. I can never find this thing. I'm so happy. I'm so proud of myself. Metric template. So you would just essentially copy this and put it in a Google Doc, and then we'll just start from there. And we would do it together. Like, you don't have to feel like you have to write the whole thing yourself, for sure. Absolutely not. We can absolutely do it together. It's a collaborative process, for sure. But I will drop that in here. Um, just so folks can, if you want, you can give it a start. And that's really, uh, really helpful, actually, because um, starting is the hardest part, right? <laughs> like having this blank screen of like, I don't know what to do next. That's the hardest part. So even just getting this into a Google Doc that the group can now take and move forward, move it off zero. That's our that's our thing at chaos. We just want to move it off zero. So, um, so yeah, so that's the template. Feel free again to look at this list. And if you see something that's been considering, even if you don't even know really, like if we haven't given you any <laughs> any context at all, um, you know, we can still start it. So feel free to do that. You are all empowered to, to do that for sure. And I'm going to stop right there and just answer questions about that if, if anybody has any, because you might.
silence. Bring in some quiet today. All right, well, we can just take some take some time offline if you if you have a minute and just look through that. And if, if you're like, I don't feel comfortable doing this, that's also completely valid, completely valid. Um, I, Josh, if it's OK, would I, I'll put it to you. Would you feel comfortable starting a metric with that template? And if not, I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, yeah, I can give that a swing. Awesome. Awesome. That would be fantastic. And then next time we'll um, maybe take a look. We can take like 10 minutes or 15 minutes and the group will just kind of dump our ideas in there with you, you know, whatever, whatever you feel comfortable putting in that doc to get it started is, is completely fine. Even if it's just the template itself, you know, we can, we can work with anything. So it's good. Perfect. Okay. And I'm actually going to put um, AI Josh. To start a new metric. Awesome. And this is also, you know, just for those who have um, maybe not contributed a lot to chaos, but want to, I think the metrics development is a really great place to do that because you don't have to necessarily be an expert. Um, uh, in fact, it's, it's good if you aren't, because then you're reading it from a, like a, a totally new person's point of view. So it helps kind of make it make the document kind of more accessible and understandable and flow because you know if you're so embedded in something sometimes it's you, you forget what you don't know kind of a thing so. Um, if you've never um, contributed to a metric before you are, this is a great place to start to be perfectly honest um, any any working group is great to, to do that, but the DEI I think specifically is is a really good place to just start so we're happy to have all those contributors reach out. All right, well, we have nine minutes left. Does anybody have anything to add to our agenda? Questions, comments, anything that's on your minds? What's on your minds? Such silence today. <laughs> I love it. Everybody's just like, yeah, we're just tired. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I do nothing to add okay well we can absolutely just kind of uh give yourself some some time back eight minutes back um for those of you who are new and want to show up to our onboarding session in uh at the top of the hour in what 18 minutes uh, we will see you then otherwise we will see you here next week same time same place and i hope everybody has a great rest of your day evening night whatever all right, I will see you all later. Have a good one. Good to see everybody.